Hi everyone. Um, so in this video, this is going to be kind of a follow-up to some of the other videos that we've done uh, regarding kind of Rhino, using Rhino inside Revit um, and folding in some other tools. So I'm going to, in this example, I'm going to be using uh, Ladybug inside a Grasshopper, um, which will be kind of accessing the power of being able to use analysis tools like Ladybug um, and connect it directly into Revit. So um, before we get into opening up Rhino inside, I wanted to just quickly show what I've set up here and what we're going to kind of do. Um, so the goal, I've just set up a, a, a basic floor plan here, and I've kind of, the idea is that this is going to be a diagram, and we have like offices around sort of the perimeter here. And the idea is that we, we want to kind of do some sort of view analysis from each of these offices and then kind of apply so I set up a project parameter that applied to rooms called a view score here so right now they're all just kind of populated with a default point one um, and so in order to do that just to kind of quickly show you would go to manage project parameters um, so you see here I already have it but you would go to add and then you can make something like view score or whatever you're trying to do. Um, you'd apply it. In this case, we're using rooms. So I, I went down here. I selected rooms. And then this was an, uh, a number parameter. So if you want to recreate this and follow along, that's how you would create that parameter and apply it to all the rooms in your project. Now, the second part of what I've kind of preset up here is this view that you see with some filters in it. So the what the filters uh, look like is um, I don't know why my quick keys aren't working um, so anyway the uh, filters are set up here are um, kind of right now I have these four sort of buckets to catch uh, these different scores so the view score I'm gonna say is gonna be on a scale of 0 to 1 so if we were to come to edit new, the uh, low view score is, so this is a filter that I'm setting up for rooms, and then I'm saying if the view score is less than 1, or sorry, if the view score is less than 0.25, and the name of that uh, room equals office, um, then put it in that bucket, and then medium to low would be 0.25 to 0.5, um, and then 0.5 to 0.75, and then a high would be above a 0.75. So I'm just kind of creating these buckets, and then I'm going to uh, assign that. Uh, once the view score gets assigned, we'll see the colors change. So the kind of application here would be to maybe, it could be kind of more of just a feedback for the designer to be able to visualize which offices are, are kind of having the most access to views, um, or it could be kind of more of a sales tool where if you're leasing out the space or something like that, you might want to create some sort of diagram that sh would help you either price it or, or show whoever's trying to lease it kind of like where they would want to lay out the spaces, um, things like that. So that's kind of the overall goal. And we'll be using the VROS tool in Ladybug, um, so we'll kind of explain that if you're not familiar with that a little bit. All right, so if uh, you have, you know, this assumes that you have Rhino inside uh, installed and, and Ladybug installed and all that kind of stuff. So you'll come into add-ins, Rhino, I've already done it, so this is here. Um, I'm going to open up Rhino. So another thing I've kind of preset up just to save some time in the video is I brought in um, some of this information into a Rhino model. I have kind of like a dummy context here um, that just is some sort of fake buildings around around the site um, and then I've also separated I've also brought in one thing that we're going to want to use as sort of a bounding geometry is walls um, and so I've kind of separated a few things out here so I have all my level four walls essentially um, these kind of continue up which is fine the view rows only works on like the X on like a XY horizontal plane um, so it doesn't really matter if there's stuff above or below. Um, so these are kind of be, this will be like the, the context that I'll bring into Grasshopper um, for this analysis. So this will kind of make more sense as we go. Um, so the first step is uh, we're going to come into uh, the Revit tab here and we're going to grab rooms. Um, so I always forget what the 
things are called. So I'm just going to type in uh, category picker model dot categories picker, um, and then I'll come down here and I'm going to grab rooms. So I'll come down here, select rooms, and then I'll use the category filter. So this is the uh, element dot categories filter, and then I'll use I think it's document dot elements. So this takes a filter and it'll spit out the elements. Um, so we should see here well, we should be getting our, all of the rooms. So I've only put rooms on this one floor in the Revit model. So if you're working in a project that you've kind of put floors in more floors, you'll uh, rooms in more floors, you'll see uh, you know more rooms. And whatnot. Um, but these are what we have now. Um, trying to keep it pretty light to kind of keep this quick. Um, so now the next step is we want to isolate just the offices. So we're going to need to get the room names. So I'm going to use the parameter get, I think it's something like that. Um, Element dot parameter get, and I'm gonna feed it the elements, and then I'm gonna say uh, name. So this will give me the room name. And so now I would just want to filter out just the offices. Um, so there's a few different ways we can do this. Uh, I'm going to use the evaluate tool here and make like a string containment check. Um, so usually when I use this, I'll kind of get rid of those and just do x, y, just so when I type it out in here, it's a little bit shorter. Um, so we can do a string contains. So if you see, if you come into the evaluate tool if you're not familiar with it, you can kind of see some of the different um, expressions that you can call here. So we'll use this contains one. And so x and y are our inputs. So this is going to check if the string y is contained within the string x. And so we'll feed our values into here. And then we will say, uh, we'll just create a string and say office. And so now we should be getting a series of Booleans. So uh, so basically, if, if the room name is office, it'll return true. Or if it, sorry, if it contains the word office. So the reason I've, I've done contains in this case is in case you had uh, named your offices like office medium, office small, or something like that, it would still catch it as an office. Um, all right, so now that we've got that, we can kind of dispatch the elements, uh, the room elements. So I'm just going to use the dispatch command in, in Grasshopper, and I'll grab the elements from here, and then I'll use this as my dispatch pattern. So this will give me list A should be all the offices now, as we see here. Um, and so the next step, now that I have those offices isolated, uh, I'm going to want to kind of pick a point in each of those offices. So for the sake of speed, I'm just going to be using the centroid of each of them. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab the geometry first. So element.geometry. Um, and then I guess I'm just going to leave the detail level as the default. Um, and so this should give me a, a series of closed B reps, so we can kind of see here in red. Um, those are the uh, B reps of the rooms. And then uh, the next step would be to get the centroids. So if I just use the area tool in Rhino and Grasshopper, uh, I can now get all the sort of centroids of each of those spaces. Now I'm going to kind of, uh, you know, 
proceed with using the centroids. If you're really kind of doing a more rigorous approach here, you might want to move these points out toward the edges uh, closer to the windows. Or if you have like a model, for example, that has window elements, that might be a better element to use as, as a way of grabbing your point um, or something like that. So there's some different approaches here. This is just kind of a quick one for the purpose of demonstration. Um, so now that we have those points, so I'm going to kind of jump ahead and then we're going to work our way back. Um, so if I come into Ladybug, uh, I'm going to be using probably the simplest tool there is, um, which is this view rows. Uh, it, it's simple in terms of that it doesn't really require any other setup. Uh, whereas like a lot of the other analysis kind of tools will require you to bring in weather data and all that kind of stuff. This is really just like a geometric projection. Um, so, so it's kind of irregardless of, of uh, location and all that kind of stuff. So the context input is going to be the, con the sort of context, the buildings and, and walls in, in my model. So I'm just going to put in some B-reps for that. And I'll kind of just zoom out here and set multiple. And I'm just going to do a window select over here. Oh, I forgot to hit enter. OK, so and my context. Um, and then. I'll grab, so the planes are going to be kind of just the centroids, um, and then the radius I'll set to, say, like 300. Um, I'm going to disable this real quick um, before I get everything connected. So the radius is going to be, I'm in feet, I'm working in feet, because Revit's in feet, and I've set my Rhino model to be in feet. So this is going to basically be a 300 foot radius around each of these points. Um, in order to kind of get our projection onto the surrounding context. You can play around with this um, as, as needed. Um, and then those will be my centroids. Um, all right, so I think that should be good. Uh, just doing some checks here. Okay, so I'll run this now. I, what I might need to do is... Uh, pause the video as this is going, because uh, this could take a few minutes. So I'm going to pause the recording uh, and let this run, and then I'll come back. OK, so that finished up running. It took about five minutes or so. Um, so that was you know, on 14 or so, something like that, rooms. Um, so you know, just be aware if you're if you're running this on a large number of rooms, uh, you know I'd be cautious and kind of run it on a small batches. Um, I'd also you know if I was running this a lot, I'd probably want to uh, kind of clean up this geometry. Part of the reason it, it took as long as it did is is because I have all these walls in there as their own kind of extrusion, whereas I could just have them as uh, flat planes to simplify it a little bit. Um, but anyway, we'll kind of uh, continue on with what we have. So the view rows, um, I'll kind of hide this and uh, show one at a time to get a better uh, understanding of what it is. Um, first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to flatten what's coming out of here. So right now I have um, uh, basically like a grafted tree of, of all the outputs. Uh, I could flatten it in here, but it'll I think it will end up rerunning the analysis, so I'm going to just flatten it uh, separately. Um, and so I'm going to hide this as well. And if I did like a, a list item, and I'm just doing this so we can visualize it. You don't really have to do this. Um, but so you can kind of see these are the view roses for each of those points, um, kind of you know looking out the windows, you know, what you would see if you were in each of these uh, spots. So this looks pretty good um, in terms of how it's it's working. Uh, so you'll see here we have a bunch of outputs. There's the view rows, um, which is actually outputting um, like a trimmed surface. Uh, and then there's the blocked, which is kind of like the reverse. It's kind of like the it's a planar curve that's the inverse, sort of of the um, 
of the V-Rows. Let's just take a look at it. So it's sort of kind of, yeah, so it's it's basically like the inverse of the V-Rows in a, in a way, um, showing what's blocked. And then there's the visible angle, which is, this is kind of what we're going to end up using. Um, I'm just going to delete that. This is what we're going to end up using for our uh, V-Range, kind of the which we're going to remap to, you know, 0 to 1. Um, so we'll use this. I'm going to flatten it. And and so now we can use this as our kind of our bounds and, and values that will end up getting mapped. So in order to remap it to 0 to 1, I'll use the remap component. And my target is going to be 0 to 1, which is the default in Grasshopper. Uh, the source, so I can do like the the bounds, the min-max bounds of this list of numbers. Um, so this will give me, you know, 8 to 83. Uh, so that'll be the source, and then these will be my values. Um, and so we can take a look at, I'm just going to you know, copy and paste this and take a look here. So, you know, if you recall, my buckets are like 0 to 0 0.25, 0.25 to 5, uh, 0.5 and 0.5 to 0.75 and then greater than 0.75. Um, so the I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of checking if I'm going to get like a sort of a nice even spread. Sometimes if I if I have some very extreme cases that might cause my uh, you know the gradient, I might just have like one really good room, one really bad room, and then like everything else is just going to fall under one bucket. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is kind of check. Uh, as far as you know, creating a, a graphic that's going to be more informative. Um, so right now I'm going to have you know one. I'll have a few that are less than 0.25. Or actually, most of them are going to be less than 0.25. One that's one. So I'm going to I'm going to in this case I'm going to be missing. Uh, I'm not going to really be catching too many buckets. So what I might want to do is like remap. I might kind of cheat and create a, a separate domain. Um, so I'm going to construct my own domain and say, you know, from something like 10 to 50, let's just see, because like we have this 83 number here, which is kind of uh, a little bit of an oddity related to the other ones. Um, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and make my own domain. Um, and I'll do it from like 10 to, let's say 50 for now, we can always adjust it. Um, so, and you'll notice we'll get some numbers that are greater than one and some numbers that are great or less or are negative, basically, which is fine because in our checks in Revit, we're just checking if it's greater than 0.75 or if it's less than 0.25. So we'll still be able to catch those values, which is fine. So this looks like a little bit more of a, I'll get a little bit uh, better of a gradient in those middle ranges. So I'm going to use these as my values. Uh, and then kind of the last step would be to set the parameter. So... I'll do the parameter set. Um, so my elements are going to be the rooms that I've dispatched. Um, so I have to come back to, where is it? This list of rooms here. So list A is my rooms. Uh, and then the parameter key is going to be uh, view view score was the name of the parameter that I made. Uh, and then the parameter values are going to be these, uh, these remapped values. So, should work. So if I come into Revit now, you'll kind of see um, that, you know, these colors have been changed based on uh, the view score that's been assigned to them in the filter. Um, one last thing we could do just to kind of demonstrate one cool thing that we can do would be to uh, bring in like a, a V rows, for example. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. So let's say I wanted to bring in like this V rows. Uh, I can do a uh, Revit has a 
uh, some options for bringing in like shapes and stuff. Uh, so I can do like add direct shape. Um, I think I can probably just do this one. Uh, so the name, category, it'll probably just assume some generic category. Let's just give it a shot and see what happens. Um, all right, so I'm going to minimize this, come into Revit. If I go to 3D now, so you see I brought this view rows in. Um, and I can kind of preview those buildings in Revit as well, as long as uh, Grasshopper is open. Um, so now, you know, this view rows element lives inside of Revit. And if I wanted to kind of bring more of them in, I could and, you know, diagram this in Revit, which could be kind of cool to do as a some sort of visualization of the analysis um, and then tying it back to this floor plan, for example. Uh, and then just to kind of show these, uh, all these values are basically put into the view score here. So this is just kind of a, a demonstration of, of that overall workflow and how you can kind of leverage the power of Rhino inside to, to you know, and the ability to do uh, analysis uh, tools really quickly in terms of geometric projections and stuff like that inside of Grasshopper and, and have that kind of feed into Revit. Uh, and this is like more of a kind of a, a data approach as opposed to some of the other tutorials that we've done, which are more kind of facade systems and things like that. All right, so hope you uh, are able to follow along with that, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.